I want to take a look at solving proportions from just a little bit uh, different perspective as they get a little bit harder. It's still the same exact principle, but it's not. Um, you know, you'll get some road bumps here and say, you know, what's going on? This seems different, but it's really not. These are all cross multiply problems, but let's examine how they look different to start. Here in this first problem, we see that we have one variable, okay, it's B. It only appears once, okay, in the problem. And that's not so bad until we move over to the medium ones where we have um, X and it only appears once in the problem, if you notice, on top. But we also see that it's part of two terms. Okay, that makes it look very much different here. Okay, so that's um, going to be a little bit harder than this problem we call easy. Then in this last instance, if you notice, we see something a little bit different. We see that the variable appears twice. Okay? It's still a one variable problem because the only variables are, but it's appearing twice. And that's going to become a little bit difficult um, in relation to the other one. The one thing I want you to see here is that these two problems, which make them harder than this one that I'm calling the easy problem, is that you're going to have to apply something called distribution. Well, that's good because you should be able to distribute by now. Okay? So let's take a look at uh, doing these and see how we do here. Okay, we're going to cross multiply negative 36b, okay, in that instance. And then this instance of multiplication is going to give us 12 times 5, which I know is 60. There's only one more step in this problem, which is divide by negative 36, making a 1b, which we write just as b on the left side. And then we obviously this answer is going to be negative, and 36 does not go to 60, so we put our brain in fraction mode and say, how is it we actually simplify that? Well, um, the one thing that we see, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, so, uh, sorry, back to what we were saying, we're going to simplify this fraction. We see that 12 goes into both 60 and 36, giving us 5, excuse me, I'll make that some color for it. Uh, 12 goes in 65 times, 12 goes into 36 three times, making the answer B equals negative 5 thirds. Uh, again, if we know the answer is negative, we can put the ne we can associate the negative with the numerator. Okay, so continuing on, we see here that doing the multiplication of 2 times 35 in this problem is very straightforward. It's just going to be, excuse me, it's going to be 70. And then we see when we get into the multiplication of 10 times x plus 4, we have to treat x plus 4 like it's a quantity. So instead of just trying to multiply it outright, we should be trying to set it up with good writing so we know we just distribute. So we 70 equals 10x plus 40. Subtract 40 from both sides. 30 equals 10x, divide both sides by 10, and that gives us x equals 3. And if we notice too, right when we get past that first step of distribution, it sounds relatively easy, it's just a two-step equation. And now here, what we're looking for is that we're going to cross-multiply in this problem, and if you notice this before we start, this cross-multiplication will yield the need, will prompt the need for distribution, as will this multiplication. Okay, so let's take a look. This first one is going to be negative 2 times the quantity, r minus 7. And that's going to be equal to 10 times the quantity, r plus 4. Okay, very important to set that up before actually trying to distribute, especially when there's negative signs around, very easy to make a sign mistake. So now by distributing at negative 2r, then negative times negative is positive, gives us 2 times 7 is 14, equal to 10r plus 40. Now that being said, we need to, after distributing, look to collect like terms, which we can't on each side. Um, there are no like terms on the left, there are no like terms to be collected on the right. 
But we do see that the variable r appears twice. So what we will do is actually get rid of the negative 2r by using the inverse and then applying that to both sides to keep the equation balanced. So negative 2r plus 2r cancels, bring down the 14. 10r plus 2r is 12r, bring down the plus 40. And now we've got just a couple of last steps. Should feel pretty confident that we're going to achieve the right answer here. And then we're going to get um, negative 26 equals 12r. And then from there, um, a little bit out of space, so I'm going to take this line up top and just recopy it. Now to get r by itself, I'll divide both sides by 2 and get r, excuse me, I'm going to divide both sides by 12. I just copied the problem. It was actually negative 26 equals 12 r. And then that's going to give me, well, it's going to give me a negative. And 26 over 12 is going to be dividing both of those by 2, 13 over 6. These answers can be checked on your calculator by using the store button. Uh, and you will see that they yield true statements.